research and like, gain that background information. Just because, if you think about it, people realistically will not spend hours and hours at a time researching a topic. You know, people, you hear around the phrase, oh, do your own research. But really, doing research is quite an art. Just because of the nature of you have to look at the background, you have to get that prior knowledge before you look into the main topic. And then once you get to the topic, it's okay. You're going to look at, you're trying to look at it from a non-biased uh, stand. So that means that you're going to be looking at things that might corroborate what you're looking at or what you're thinking, your hypothesis or you're going to be looking at information that might not agree with your hypothesis. You're just grabbing the information. And of course, everybody has a bias as far as, you know, what you're thinking. Um, but not anybody can do research for that same reason, because you do have to base yourselves just on the facts. And if your hypothesis is not supported by facts, then you have to rephrase it and say, OK, what am I going to be looking for if it's not what I'm thinking? then how do I have to change my thoughts in order to know what I'm actually looking at? And you know, you don't really get that in a day-to-day -day basis. So getting that out of the way, let's approach this topic um, that I've been, you know, hearing about recently. Well, it's not that recent, but it kind of has been popping up again. And that's the concept of viral shedding. Now, it's not fair to say kind of, oh, the vaccine shedding, you know, from the vaccine that you have the virus that's coming out and you're going to infect others and etc. And this is something that was kind of used as a, a sorry excuse of an explanation um, by this one individual that I'm not going to either bother looking up, but uh, he is a director over at a private school in Florida. And one of the rules that he put in place recently was if the child is vaccinated then they have to stay i think it was like 15 days or 30 days in quarantine just to see you know that if they shed the virus you know it gets shed and all of that and they they don't infect the other students that are not vaccinated it's kind of like a reverse way of thinking it's, it's very odd to be honest so if you look for the actual topic, you look at under vaccine shedding, it's not really a thing. It's not the correct term is vaccinated induced um, shedding, viral shedding. And what that means is that it's referring to shedding or kind of um, to put it in another way. It's referring to the amount of a virus that can be detected through um, through the skin or through mucous membranes um, after having been vaccinated, which is very much, here's the thing. It's not so much that it is significant that, oh, you're going to be getting somebody else sick just because you got the vaccine. It's actually more so used for, um, it's more it's more for more pharmaceutical purposes, not as in medications, but as in when you're developing a vaccine, if you want to know if it's has been if it's effective, then it's a way of measuring of how much or how little of this viral shedding there is um, after getting the vaccine. But it's not that you're going to get sick from that shedding. Having said that, it's not that everything is going to cause shedding with a virus. What do I mean by this? So when I was looking up the information about viral shedding or vaccination induced viral shedding, it mainly was referring to studies that looked at viruses such as rabies, which are not retroviruses. So this is not what we're talking about with the virus and the types of vaccines that are used are usually vaccines that are of two types. They are the live attenuated viruses. So that means that their ability has been suppressed. Their ability to be transmissible has been suppressed. And that's what's being given in. And that's kind of like a standard type of vaccine. Uh, then you have 
the other type of vaccine, which is basically inactivated by this itself. And so, this has nothing to do with the current vaccines that we're talking about, the same, the Moderna vaccine, the Pfizer. These are mRNA uh, type of vaccines. Now, what is mRNA? If we go back to biology, the concepts in biology, when the DNA having all that data bank of the body, um, what usually happens is that a copy is made, and that copy is made from the DNA, which has adenosine, cytosine, uh, tyrosine, and um, guanine. Those are the four bases. And when you do a template, a copy of that template, you have what's called an mRNA. Now it's from it's what's referred to as a messenger RNA, and that strand. And the difference is mainly going to be in, instead of ad, uh, adenosine, now you're going to have uh, uracil, another type of base. But what it is is that that new copy, the mRNA, access the nucleus, and that is what's going to be used in order to synthesize amino acids, which turn into proteins. And so kind of like a brief summary. Uh, from the DNA, you make a copy, which is the mRNA, and that's what the cell is going to use to produce the, the proteins. And proteins can be used as in structure for enzymes, you know, for different functions of the cell. Now, the mRNA vaccines are different because it's not the actual virus. It's that information from the virus that the body needs in order to make the antibodies. What is going to be looking for and acting against the virus if you get exposed to it. So that's, you know, that's a major difference. When you're talking about viral shedding, you're talking about that shedding, not significant. I mean, it's not going to be significant enough to get somebody else sick. And it's not even used for looking at transmissibility. It's more of, okay, you have this. How efficient is the vaccine? But those vaccines are different from the vaccines that we're talking about today, as in the mRNA vaccines. Those use a different technology, and you know that's all that is needed. Now, if we go over to um, what this guy was talking about, you can now understand how frustrating it is because basically vaccines are used to protect children. You're refusing to protect children, and so instead you have the non-vaccinated children who, you know, you already have people who are hesitant of their children getting vaccines, other vaccines, and now you have this kind of more a greater polarization of, of not just COVID, the virus, but also the measures of the face masks, social distancing, the vaccine, which is now available for prevention. I mean, it, it gets ridiculous. And so, touching on that a little bit, I also want to mention about this kind of ludicrous claim that is the Selenko Protocol. Now, the reason I want to mention it is because there has been a lot of misinformation, and it looks like a lot of it kind of links back to, oh, the Selenko Protocol. You know, you have a lot of conservatives saying, oh, yeah. I'm not afraid because you, you know you get zinc, acetromycin, and hydroxychloroquine. Looking into this, it looks like the Senegal protocol was based like way before the status of pandemic came into effect, while it was still kind of being transmitted from China to other places of the world. And from what I am from what I have gathered. And all the information or the sources I'm going to be linking below in the description. But basically, Zelenko was attributed to treating almost 700 patients for COVID. But this report that he treated these many patients with COVID was back in March. And if you remember, March was kind of like the beginning of, okay, officially we're in a pandemic. That is kind of odd. But anyway, uh, Selenko, I believe he works with 
I believe the hospital is called Lex Lexio um, Hill or something like that. But the bottom line is that this is Lennox Hill. Sorry, I had to look it up. Lennox Hill. And so the thing about this is that when we look at the protocol, acetromycin, okay, that's an antibiotic. Um, if we look at zinc, uh, zinc has been kind of linked a little bit with immunotherapy, but more so with HIV, which is another retrovirus, uh, similar to the same group as the as the coronavirus. However, uh, we also have that small, small detail where, mm, how can I say this? The studies that have looked at it, or one study in particular that I looked at, didn't find any significant improvement. It didn't. And so when you want to say that zinc is part of it, when you want to say acetromycin is part of it, hydroxychloroquine, there are there is no evidence that it actually works. Um, there was a study that I looked at that came from China where they concluded that well, you know, they were looking if it was actually, if there was actually any effect. It wasn't enough. It wasn't significant to say that, okay, because of the hydroxychloroquine, because of the zinc, because of, you know, because of this combination of drugs, that that is what made patients better or had less serious of an illness. It, it, it didn't. It didn't show, show anything, actually. And so this whole, it, it, it does get kind of ridiculous, especially because, you know, there was this great movement for, oh, hydroxychloroquine. That is the answer. But the thing is, hydroxychloroquine is an antiparasitic. It's used for parasite infections such as malaria, which is not a virus. And if you look at what is known, as, what is known about the mode of action, in other words, how the drug actually works. Hydroxychloroquine has an effect on it, the same as uh, chloroquine. They have an effect on the white blood cells, not on the red blood cells, not in the rest of the body cells. Specifically, it works on the white cells. And so hydroxychloroquine, you know, it's used in lupus, it's used in rheumatoid arthritis, it's just in conditions that are known as autoimmune diseases or that there's a chronic inflammation. But inflammation is carried by white blood cells. All these different factors that are released, like uh, leukotrans, that, you know, again, they're involved in the process of, of inflammation. All of this is caused by your own immune system. The coronavirus, it affects the respiratory system. There are different types of cells. You know, if you want to talk, you know, what's the difference? Depending on what type of cell you're looking at, um, there is something called cluster differentiations. And it's, you can say it's kind of like a name tag for the cells where it's an identification of what type of cell it is. And so it is possible for drugs to only have an effect on certain cells purely because of the type of CDs, as they're also known, or cluster differentiations, what type do they have? Is it CD4, CD5, CD1, CD12? I mean, there's different types for different types of cells. And it's not just like there's one for every cell. I mean, one cell can have multiple CDs, but that's way off topic. That's way off the point. The point is where the hydroxychloroquine has been studied on is on different cells that have that are not the same cells that we use or that we find in our upper airways or the lower airways the nose the throat you know the trachea the bronchioles there are different cells and so there is no proof that there is actually any effect and even in Selenko study and the studies that i found referring to the protocol are very much linked to either Selenko as being part of the study or linked to his pharmaceutical company. 
So take that with a grain of salt. But anyway, um, again, I'll be linking all the sources down below in the description. But that's kind of where I see it as of now. It's not that I'm trying to disparage, you know, this type of information. But as you can tell, there was a lot of reading involved in, in a very short amount of time. If you're just looking at headlines, you know, it, it's very easy to fall into the trap of, oh, this person said this, so it must, it must be true. Or, you know what, I believe this. Oh, this tagline says the same thing. Okay, I'm going to agree with it. If there's another article that comes up, yeah, I'm not going to believe it. Or, oh, I can't believe it because, you know, that other person. It's not as simple as that. And in fact, that's how many people have this distorted sense of, you know, the actual medical information and how they interpret it to be. There is that kind of disparity. But anyway, um, to make it short, my conclusion, to make it short, um, the thing about virus shedding, the vaccine shedding that they call it, it has nothing to do with the mRNA vaccines, which they don't shed, or it hasn't been seen to happen. Um, also, virus shedding does not mean that you get people um, sick from the, the virus. It's just that's not how it works. And then referring to like the Salenko protocol with the hydroxychloroquine and all that, there is no effect that has been studied that, well, that has been seen to be significant to really attribute any improvement if you follow the protocol. Many doctors were following it at first because that's one of the initial um, procedures that came out or not procedures, but protocols that came up with this new disease, which was COVID, you know, it was new. So how do you treat somebody for a new disease? It has been seen now that no, it, there is no effect with the protocol and there's no reason to. So yeah, if anything, it's going to sound like a broken record, but if you do your own research, don't look at any source that comes from a social media platform. Try to look at the actual sources. Um, try to look at the actual information. If it's on a post, if it's on, I don't know, somebody's Facebook page, if it's in a YouTube video, like even in this video, look at the actual sites, try to look up the information. And if you don't understand it, that's okay. Nobody knows everything. But don't be looking at the, I don't know, at the Crowders, at the uh, Charlie Kirks, at the uh, Shapiro's. You know, don't just listen to anybody. Just because they agree with some of your worldviews, that will only cause a rabbit hole where your own beliefs are going to be echoed and the information you guys not always going to be accurate but anyway that's all i have to say for now and well everybody take care and remember be kind to those around you you never know what they're going through all right see you later Bye bye